And welcome back to our last game of the day here for Tencent LPL Summer. It is week five, day two, as we move well and truly through halfway through the weekend to Young Glory up against World Elite will be our last game here. My name is Pastry Time. I'm going to be joined by Papa Smithy. Papa Smithy, we've seen a lot of craziness today in week five. That seems to be our theme. What can possibly happen in this game is my only question. I mean, week five has easily been bizarre world uh, so far, Pastry Time. All started off with YG just coming out and wiping the floor with first place OMG there. I mean, just really, really excellent play they showed that game. They've looked really good. I mean, their last two games, beating Positive Energy, beating OMG, that's the top two teams. And for a team that was languishing towards the bottom, you know, going from 3-8 and eight to 5-8 and eight when your next two fixtures are Positive Energy and OMG, that's a team that's in form here. So I'm looking to Young Glory to see if they can continue that momentum and become a real threat in the second half of the LPL, or whether that was almost a flash in the pan. We'll find out. Well, two big names already claimed here. We'll see if they can do it again here with possibly the biggest name in Chinese League of Legends in World Elite. The bands here, of course, for YG. Zach Shen and Twisted Fate, the three. We've got Elise, Lissandra, and Shivana as first pick lease in for Young Glory, answered by Ken and Thresh. Nami Twitch over on the other side there for Young Glory, and Oriana locked in already catches us up as looks like we're going to have Vayne here, which, again, we absolutely expect here. The only real question for me, though, Papa, is... Who is the jungler and who is our mid laner today for World Elite? Because yesterday we had things change up a little. Now they haven't obviously officially changed those roles that we'd expect to see Man in the third slot here and Messiah in the second slot as we always enter the lobby, top lane, jungle, mid lane, AD carry and support. But again, it could just be another switch. We'll have to wait till we're in game to find that out. But a very traditional team fight coming out of World Elite here. You can tell exactly what's going to happen. The Java and Oriana initiate potentially with either a cannon second initiator or even initiating himself and the box as well. That's all about team fights is World Elite so far. Yeah, it's just a matter of which carry do they want to protect here. I mean, you saw Weijia who's considering Vayne, and again, that would make a lot of sense here, but went with Jarvan instead, along with their Oriana for their third and fourth pick. Vi here actually for what Young Glory is quite interesting, and Zyra's going to round it out as well. So, Young Glory kind of, again, adding a little bit of spice. They were kind of the first team, I think, in the LPL, at least for Summer here, to pull out Shivana. And now Vi is a champion we've not seen for a very long time here. And looks like they may be trying to kill Weijia over there on that vein. And remember, the first Vi and the only Vi it seems to be for the LPL was in that Royal game um, that we saw the first day we started casting where they went for the four assassins and it didn't work out for them there. But yeah, right, a very slippery lineup here. You're going to expect probably a Vi jungle, so I guess that means a Lee Sin top and a Zyra mid. I mean, Zyra mid is actually one of Young Glory's go-to picks. They love that Zyra mid for the control it can put out. And to be honest... In their minds, at least, and, and based on how their comps work, very similar uh, teamfight control between Zyra and Oriana. Uh, yeah, I actually was going to compare Zara to Kennen, actually, when you mentioned it, because they have very similar big AOE odds that can peel very well. And in cases, be aggressive. Kennen obviously gets the better end of that deal in terms of being aggressive. But if you're looking to protect your Twitch with a big, big teamfight ultimate, Strangle Thorns is a pretty nice one, especially when you follow up with Tidal Wave. And that is a combo, Papa Smithy, by the way. You Strangle Thorns into Tidal Wave, and everybody gets knocked up for days. Yeah, knocked up, slowed, displaced. Just generally unhappy against that combo, as we see that... It's back to the old standard page time. We're going to see Messiah in the mid on Oriana and Man, formerly Troll, formerly Clear Love, on Jungle Jarvan. Yep, so he's back to the jungle. Messiah's back to mid. I mean, they tried it once in that game yesterday. It'd be interesting to see if they ever choose to try it again and maybe, or maybe just in general want to shuffle things around. But I think, you know, World Elite... I think they've not had as much success as they would have liked, but they've still looked quite good as a team. And it just seems like... No one big thing is going wrong, so something would necessitate maybe a role change. Is YG here going to get spotted out? The ball will spot them there. Wei Zhao even going to... Ooh, ooh, that's all good. The Mystic Shot threads the needle there, but he's still going to run away, which is very smart. Wants to make sure he doesn't come through for the invade here. Now going to spot them off there. Going to poke Sizz down there on that Lee Sin. Pinkwood even being put down as well by Young Glory. Maybe going to look to steal this blue buff away. If they want exclusive vision of that bit of bush. And what elite. Just a matter of they've got 55 seconds or... About 50 seconds now to decide what they want to do. And it looks like they might even go for the reinvade option, which would be quite interesting. And it's going to be a solo top Vi coming out here, Pastry Town. They do send Lee Sin into the jungle. Vi and a solo lane, I don't really recall seeing since the very early days of the EU LCS when Shushe was trying the Vi mid. 
I mean, I can see the theory of putting a Vi against Cannon. You know, on the one hand, it's a melee champion, so you're expecting a Doran's Blade, or in this case, Red Pot Cannon, to just wail away on with auto attacks on that champion. But Vi does have that great gap closer on Q, and we always think of Jarvan as a strong lane matchup for Cannon, just because he can get in there and do a lot of damage. If Vi is able to use a Q aggressively and just get those auto attack resets with an E, maybe she can trade damage strongly with Cannon as well. Maybe. I'm very curious to see how that plays out here. Looks like World Elite, though, looking for the invade themselves. In fact, this was really smart. Put the pink one down towards their own blue buff and now invading for this one as well. So really nice calls. And this was the thing that stood out to me from World Elite yesterday, is that they made really smart level 1 decisions. And kind of, the mid game didn't go quite as well. They couldn't make things happen in the team fights as well with the way the roll stop would work. But they looked way more confident in the early levels. And this is really aggressive. They've actually taken both blue buffs and now Man's going over to take the red. It's interesting play there, that splitting the clean. Three buff starts are always very, very strong. Absolutely, and Ezreal, I think, with blue buff is just obnoxious here. Weijia are going to be very, very happy with this eventuality. This is going to be spamming Mystic Shots for days here, and Young Glory probably going to struggle here in this bottom lane a bit. Nami Twitch, plenty of strength there in that one. We always talk about how strong Twitch is, but level 2 already for this Ezreal, and you know that I <laughs> have to back away. He's going to eat Mystic Shots if you stay too close. And we've been wondering what teams will do against Twitch. You know, we've seen Twitch bans, we've seen Twitch first picks. Giving blue to your Ezreal is certainly an interesting adaptation, but you can see the strength, right? It's getting that early level to ensuring that you don't just have to sit there and, and take those Venom cast sponge combos. You're actually ahead early to be able to trade. Yeah, we saw them kind of mouse over Vayne for a second. I actually forgot to mention in draft, but I really like this against the, kind of the, the Vi in particular that YG have gotten. I mean, I think it's way safer here. So, I mean, actually pops his red pot going aggressive on the auto. That is not at all what they wanted. Then Gork land on the Nami as well. Love Cryboy. Now it could be in trouble. They actually waddled into that one as well. And YG are looking aggressively for that kill. Essence Flux are actually on top of Dragon just to trade poke back and forth. The Deadly Venom plus Sponge though. Going to do a decent amount of damage there to Weijia. So a nice hook there from Thresh. Again, kind of lucked into that one as Nami watered a little too far to the side to get hooked up. Top lane as well. Samway very aggressive. They're almost picking up their Vi. Now 10 CS ahead already in that lane. So Water Elite, looking aggressive for level 1 with the 3 buff start. Doing well down bottom. Doing great up top as well. Although Lee Sin may be going to make the difference here. In fact, oh goodness, this could be bad for Salme. Yeah. There it goes. Auto good flash through from Salme. And we'll be able to get out with Lightning Rush on. Yeah, worth noting here. I mean, Jarvan's going to be licking his chops in this game, pastry time. Two winning lanes with all the CC Jarvan can provide is a delicious prospect. Comes on top as well, forces a flash out from Sears. Massive amount of damage they've done as well. Salme almost got that stun through there as well, so that could have been a deadly sin. Sears forced to flash very early out there from that gank. And just all the pressure coming out from World Elite. I mean, mid right now is the only lane that's really kind of split, and Messiah's actually pretty comfortably up in CS there as well. It's Going between about 5 and 10 CS ahead right now, so clearly not too much trouble there. I mean, Otto is in so much, so much trouble up in the top lane, and obviously bottom lane's not happy either with that blue buff. In fact, they're going to dive here as well. They're actually taking up the tower there. Great stun from Cannon, and that's going to be first blood to Jarvan. And no minions, so very easy to hit that Shuriken Q and it's Otto W, so smart decision there. And Otto, it's always a risk to bring out such a non-meta pick like Vitop against a ranged laner like Cannon. Doesn't look like it's going to pay off for Young Glory here. So they could be in trouble here. Man actually chasing Sis away. That red Pot health, they're doing nicely. Good stun as well. Sis just going to defend up this top lane as best he can. Salme likely going to go back and shop now and probably have some nice items to buy. And everything looking good here for World Elite in the early game. It's kind of one of those things we haven't seen World Elite be super far ahead in the early game for a while. And this is not super far ahead. They've got a comfortable little lead here of about 1500 gold. But it seems like it's been a while since we've seen them actually play aggressively. I think it's been a long time since we've seen them win two lanes straight up. But, you know, in terms of top and bot, they're in a super, super happy position here. I guess the only happy thing from a Young Glory perspective, and especially from Otto's perspective, is that Man picked up the kill on that turret dive. So, not quite as vindicated for picking up that red blot, red pot start. So you're not getting that 400 gold for your 350 gold investment. But coming back with Double Doran's Blade. Still going to be a hell of a time for Vi in the top yeah, lane. Yeah, I mean, Vi thankfully has uh, two Dorans of her own. She's got a Doran Shield and a Doran's Blade, so 
Going to be a little easier to shake off some of that damage, but you I mean, Red Pot's still ticking away for a little while longer, maybe about a minute or so. And we all saw just how bad, how awful that harass can be as a melee champion against Cannon. And those those Doran's Blades are not going to help that threat at all there as Man now. Looking to rotate through the jungle, he's got plenty of wards to put down, puts one down there. And a spirit turn up for Jarvan. I mean, for the kill he got, he doesn't have too much gold. I guess he's invested most of it into consumables. So we'll have to see if that advantage he can get with early vision can maybe turn into something here. And just skulking around, putting down an aggressive ward. As I was saying before, an aggressive jungler with winning lanes is a happy, happy times for man. So he's just looking to capitalize on any small mistakes from Young Glory. Yeah. I mean, really at level 6 as well, can maybe set up tower dives. Already set the one up there in top lane to help somebody there and pick up the first blood actually for himself there. Now looking to maybe rotate through the bottom lane. Just moving through the jungle right now. Looking for the hook. Finds it on the dragon as well. Damage going to come. Immediate barrier being popped there by Twitch. It takes a lot of damage. Even finds a mystic shot there as he goes into ambush. With Nami gone from that lane. Twitch forced to back off as well. Now the push can come through potentially as well. Looks like Jarvan stealing away the red buff on the right hand side there as well. So just continued aggression here from Mortal Elite. Really punishing YG as much as they can across the map. I love the little ward in top lane as we see Dragon being started there. You see a ward being put down by Xiaomei. Double ward here, but one ward just to stop uh, Otto from being able to be freely able to take experience here. They don't want Otto getting any experience, let alone last hit. And now ride everybody into the lantern as well. Wei Zhao gets ridden in, rotate from the mid does Messiah on Oriana as well, and there's a very decisive dragon there from World Elite. And you know, we've kind of mentioned it a little in those games that we saw in the last few weeks, but World Elite's decisions around dragon have not been great, to say the least. Yeah, that's, I think a lot of what's seemed off about them is that they made a couple of interesting calls around dragon here. Otto actually could be uh, going on to Soundway there. The all activated there for Cannon as well. Lots and lots of stuns coming through, but Otto will be able to clean up the trade though, as Lysian takes a little few too many tower hits. And Soundway, he won't be happy to die, but he'll be happy with the trade. Words like decisive, clinical, smart decision making, all words that we'd associate with World Elite post the season two finals, you know, by the time that Wei Zhou had really come into his own and really the team has started to make good calls and group well. But that's, you know, been noticeably absent for the last couple of weeks of the LPL since we started covering it. So nice to see a return to form from World Elite, if only in the first eight minutes of this game. Yeah, I mean, a nice little lead here. Leading by about 2,000 gold here is Messiah. Still has a nice advantage over mid as well. Never get it. His mid lane matchup very well. They good dodge from Dragon as he gets out of the way of that death sentence. Did not want to go hooked there despite being invisible. But I mean, Twitch is struggling here. He's almost 20 CS by and has a build water, which isn't too bad. But Madam Mune is finished up here for Ezreal as well. So going to have that item ticking away and charging up. And of course, once that gauntlet comes out, it's uh, always problems against the blue Ezreal. And just a skill matchup in mid lane, you'd have to say. I mean, there's been no jungle involvement whatsoever in mid, but a mammoth lead, 24 CS in mid lane, is just huge for Messiah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Messiah, one of the players, I mean, he made the swap, it seems like, to jungle for at least a game. There's Dragon narrowly dodges one more death sentence. Jarvan even down there is all ready to follow up, but everyone's going to get out there. I mean, Messiah, it's hard to point exactly to the one thing that Wadley were doing wrong individually. I think it was definitely more of a team thing, or his auto. Maybe gonna get jumped on there as well, but just takes a little bit of damage to Xiaomei, he'll be happy there. Now as a soul. You can see though that the damage is starting to stick on Xiaomei. Otto's starting to come into his own in terms of this lane of eye. Yeah, and I think guess this is what you were talking about when it when it when you were talking about this matchup being decent for Vi once she gets going here. I mean Salme, you're right, the early harass has kind of worn off now. And uh, a lot of damage onto that cannon being done. He's got Sork Shoes now, kind of moved towards the AP part of his build here, now that he's navigated the early game. So with a decent CS lead in here as well, but I mean, Vi is really coming in now into this lane. And just pushing around as best you can here. Man, actually, dodges that Strangle Thorns out. And a good attempt to dive there from Mortal Elite here. As a hook comes through, Love Cry Boy as well. Could get popped here. It's Fizif going to clean up that kill. Very nice hook once more. Every single time Thresh lands a hook, especially on a champion like Nami, it's just so, so hard to get away. Yeah, the low base stats with that very high base damage uh, box coming out from Fizzif there. A nice pickup kill there. And the CS lead, it just keeps growing in mid lane. It's a scary, scary time. Yeah, Messiah with a great ult there as well, but Sizz with a good follow up. Messiah now has to get the kill. Flashes away there. Sizz though. Flash kick straight to the dome as Messiah is going to go down there as well. Good play there from Messiah to make sure he at least pick up the kill and almost, almost, almost gets away from that list in. At least forcing the flash there as a trade as the bottom tower is going to go down now as well. I mean, what lead? It's kind of funny for all their aggression for the decent lead they've caught themselves up. Haven't gone crazy 
with the dives and with the kills and kind of it's nice to see them return to the calculated aggression which we often see from them you know they're a team that definitely can play well when they're ahead but they never seem to you know go oh dude even Royal from the last game his man here in the top could be in trouble Otto though looking to get stunned up as well as Salme almost defensively pops Slicing Maelstrom in the top I think Waterloo just need to make small modifications to their original game plan here. I mean, the full-on Season 2, let's lane forever and show up at team fights, is gone. It's no longer a viable strategy, especially in China, where everyone's taken nods from OMG and really started to play aggressively and take down objectives with every kill. You know, that's kind of the way you deal with a team looking for late game, is to pick up kills, is to roam and use picks effectively and uh, take objectives. But even small oh physics rides wedge out in as well that's a very dead dummy mad life esque play there that beautiful was play great. from Waterly spot lane and Waterly look great when they're ahead they always have they always have played wonderful League of Legends when they're looking good they just need to start to address some of the issues that have been exploited by teams in the yeah. last couple of weeks yeah and this game's a good start here looking nice and clean and crisp here Although, with 3,500 gold being in the lead, still certainly not over here. Young Glory had plenty of room to maneuver and really make that comp come together. But the two lanes winning here, Messiah winning decisively in mid as well. Here is Man going to come through. 3v2, maybe great ult there. Sis could be in trouble. Fizz up over the side, hooks in as well. There's a true shot run to follow up, and Sis is going to get dropped there. The Stranglethorns knocks up the last two there, but now Yanto's in trouble. The Lancer going to ride Javan in there as well. Some may even rotates forward. And you set up Papa when they look good, they look great, don't they? You know, the highlight reel is coming into full effect here. Beautiful textbook play from Mortal League. Weijiao even down the bottom, just pushing here, pressuring that tier 2 turret in the bottom lane. Picked up that kill with True Chop Roger as Otto looks, on, looks to get onto Salme. Doesn't quite get through, those trees have to be a little closer and towards the middle there. Give that gap to go over, but I don't think wanted to dive, dive that cannon anyway, so probably better for Vi, or better for Otto that that didn't happen. A Fizif, I mean... We've said it before, he's just one of the me mechanically strongest supports I think I've ever seen play. And it's really good to see him on a champion like Thresher. I mean, we saw support Cinder from him at one point in the LPL. That was kind of fun to watch. But when he's on a champion where he can make plays with, boy, does he make plays. And that's why the flexibility of having someone who is mechanically skilled, who can play the Cinders of the world, but the Sonas as well. It's just an extra string to your bow. It opens up some of those... Interesting picks where you know you pick Syndra early and the enemy team can't say well that's gonna be a mid Syndra. There's no blind picking coming out there. It's just he can play basically everything as a support, so they're flexible. Salme really play. struggling now, a song battery on the top, flash out though! Not enough as Ignite's gonna pick him up. And Otto there, very nice play. Salme, little too aggressive, they just kinda of stood around. He has no real regen to speak of. I mean he's got some on hit Doran's effects that's gonna give him some life as he uh, attacks creeps or or Otto, but not enough there. Vi finally kind of getting a window in that lane there with that Brutal as able to pick up Cannon. I mean, Waterly will move towards the Dragon. They'll lose their top turret as a result, so a decent trade there for Young Glory as they pick up their first turret of the game. I mean, Sharp is actually quite happy with that result probably, just because Goodbye, this will probably Yancer. lead to Otto moving for team fights. He's happy with that. Yeah, Yancer there, very much in trouble. Goes down there to three more members of Waterlit rotating through. Weijiao sticking down towards the bottom lane. I actually like this a bit from him. I know that was one of the criticisms of him early on in Season 2 is YG do not stop the push there. And actually pick up a second turret there. Dragon going to get himself caught. Oh, Masai guess it's wrong. <laughs> and Dragon's going to be able to ambush out there. 50-50 there for Masai. Doesn't, guesses the wrong side there. And that will be him getting away. Ooh, true shot rush, maybe not. Man even looking to chase down as well. But no, Dragon will waddle himself out. A very fortunate play grab there as he gets away on a sliver of health. Weijal though pushing down the bottom lane, looking to equalize the tier 2 on the other side of the map. Take up that turret there down towards the bottom lane. Doing a good job right now, clearing out creeps as he goes as well. Ice Wall Gauntlet has to be very, very close here as well. This is cute as well from Weijal. He's closest to the side. He can arcane shift the ward. If anyone, if anyone comes towards the bottom, sorry, then Sharvan and Ariana are there ready and waiting. But the tier 2 turret goes down. 3-2 for turrets now in favor of World Elite. As they get one ahead on that metric one more time. Oracle's up now for Fizif as well. Gonna look through to look to push through the jungle here and try and create even more space for themselves. I mean with three out of out of turrets down and a decent six thousand gold or so lead they built up here. Oh, here comes the hook. Sis they're gonna get mixed in there. True drop Ranch comes through. Tidal wave comes a little late there as I think the animation got cancelled. But Wajal's in trouble. He gets dumped onto the salt battery, comes through. But the damage still here for Water Leak coming in. Otto dives completely in there. And that's three kills there. A double goes to Masai there and Oriana. Part of the problem with Vi is that when you go in, you really can't get out afterwards. 
it's one of those things where in the lane you want to build damage to justify the pick, but you also are a melee champion who gets into five members of the enemy team most likely with that assault and battery, with that ultimate. So you need to balance that tankiness with the damage, and it's not at that point in his build just yet. No, not quite. And unfortunately, the follow-up not really there. YG getting jumped on there by a very tricky world elite. Fizzif gets a nice little hook in there. I mean, ideally, you know, if I would go in, assault the carry, and then you'd follow up with Tidal Wave Stranglethorn. So even if, you know, the rest of the team was on top of your AD carry, your, on top of your initiator, sorry, you're able to follow up with plenty of control CC and then make sure the rest of your team positions correctly there as well. While all the while, I mean, you can't really... You can't stop it from happening, right? If your AD carry is in trouble, you need to protect him. But if you're walking into a bunch of massive AoEs as a result, it could be tricky. So I see the comp here for YG, but at this point, World Elite just playing circles around them in the early game, at least. And Young Glory really still have to play a little far behind here in this one. I think that the difference in the mid lane is probably the key difference to how fights are panning out here. If the scores were reversed and we had a 3 1 and 4. Uh, Yancer on this Zyra, you know, putting down the Stranglethorns, doing immense burst damage, and then Vi being able to initiate on top of that while the rest of the team is CC'd and sneaking in a couple of kills. I think fights could look very good for Young Glory, obviously with that Twitch free hitting with uh, the Spray and Prey at the back, but that's not the case, you know. Just picked up an easy large rod here, so it does have some damage, but Messiah well, well ahead here. Went back and finished a complete death cap on that buy, a huge buy from Messiah. Yeah, that's now a very threatening Oriana. I spawn Gauntlet to finish up for Ezreal now as well. So if World Elite were ever going to make any massive moves towards a big objective, maybe Baron, maybe just grouping together and looking to push down some more turrets. Now is the time they've got very key item timers coming out. The only one missing is Salme here. We would love to finish up his Zonius, but he probably has enough gold at this point. Had his Seeker's Arm Guard for quite a while. Maybe they're going to rotate towards the top lane there, push out that turret. Salme working on it himself will get it done here as Wardley one more time. Going to use Wei bait in the mid and try and see if they can hook anybody with that death sentence. And the point I was making earlier was that with those two turrets down there, the single turret was one point, but with two turrets down, finally less pressure from Cannon here. You're not going to see Otto in the top lane at all, for, for now at least. So Kenan finally doesn't have to deal with all that kill pressure that he's been under by Otto's fire. Yeah, and Salme happily takes out that top turret there. Just farming away now, looks like to go back. Maybe not, actually thinks about it a little more. I mean, YG is spending a lot of time towards the bottom side of the map here. And would lead have a big, big hold on mid just by moving through his four. So they're almost split pushing with... This cannon here, which is kind of interesting, we're going to rotate towards the tier 2, it seems like smart moves here. Just kind of realizing YG are caught out of position, can't really defend from the push that's coming in. And of course with that threat, I can potentially catch him, and there's the ward being put down as well. Young Glory, wish I could clear it out, but just one hit away. There's the tier 2 going down in top lane as well. I mean, what a leap, we've always said it. They look their best when they're playing very clean, crisp League of Legends. And, you know, it may seem a little slow going with the way they're playing, but this is just the way they play, and it's very, very hard for them to lose when they when they make very few, if any, mistakes in a game where they're ahead. Yeah, and I imagine they're waiting for Xiaomei to eventually go back and pick up his Zonians here. He definitely has the gold for it, as he's been sitting on that Seeker's Anga for a very, very long time. But they picked up a second turret without him backing, so happy to go back and get that item now. Maybe he was just cleaning out the last bits of gold he needed. There's the zone who's finished up, and if there were, any, some, if there were ever item timings for Water Leap, this is really their time to shine. An extra blasting one from Asara, so it was absolutely rich right now on this Oriana. And not even a hint of an Aegis coming out on the uh, Young Glory side. Nope, and Man's working on it. He's got a Ruby Crystal plus Null Magic Mantle, but I mean, Lee Sin right now actually has a Hex Drinker, believe it or not. That's kind of a curious choice. Now that was, you know, 1400 or maybe slightly less gold spent on that item on top of the Kindle gem he was sitting at. So, no team utility there, but of course the shield will help him to deal with the double AP. Yeah, I mean, double AP, very strong there from World Elite. Both Cannon and Oriana are very, very good here. Looks like Assault and Battery are going to come. They're actually going to dump on a Sal May here. They want to be he lanterns out as the Dark Passage comes through for Thresh. Now Messiah actually maybe going to trap Otto up there. A good knock up there from Man as well. The Hexdrinker pops there for Vi as she gets out by flashing. Physically they're getting locked up as well, taking quite a bit of damage on that Thresh. Forced it back, actually, as Weijia is now finally rotating himself towards mid. But work. very little resources done to basically ensure that if Otto ever chooses to re-enter into a fight now, for at least the five, next five minutes, probably going to die. Absolutely. Alt down for a little while as well, so World Elite going to look to make something happen if they can. I mean, again, just playing very patiently. Blue Buffy are going to get spotted. Taken up by man. Oh, never mind. Yanso gets it. That's a nice w little win for Zyra, actually. Be very happy to have that buff. 
But why Water do you... Elite, you know, they have the map to themselves. They can clear with oracles. They could force objectives. They can do whatever they want here. They basically have the run of the map, and the next team fight, even if they lose it decisively, only gives Young Glory a window into the game. Right now, Water Elite well ahead. They get to choose their objectives, and when they're ahead and when they're making smart decisions, as they have done throughout the first 21 minutes here, they usually finish up the games and uh, get on the board with some more points. It's kind of just a matter of timing things nicely. I mean, the gold lead is significant, but it's not a complete and utter landslide. I think the biggest thing for Lord Lead is to pick up yet another dragon here, so very nice for them. Kind of just the fact that they don't want to give YG too much time. You know, they look like they're playing a little slow here, and as I said, that is definitely just Lord Lead's forte. They just like to play very slow, very calculated League of Legends. I don't think they're going to give YG enough time, but that'd be the only thing I'd be worried about if I was them. It's just making sure that Young Glory can't get back into this game. It's just one of those cases where all their carries by Xiao Mei, you know, there's kills across the board. I mean, even Vizip's got in the act here. 3 0 4 looking like a carry himself on that Thresh. Support carry in full effect here. They're missing one ward here, which is uh, stopping the Baron Dance from happening, but uh, looking good nonetheless. Looks like Fizzif will come through now as well, be able to clear that out. Oh, needs to walk through that brush first. Never mind. Doesn't want to check it. Oh, never mind. There he checks it. Finds the last ward. And now Ward Lee, if they choose, can maybe try and set up something around Baron here. I mean, they were all five just kind of camped in a brush hoping that YG would walk through here. In fact, Ward Lee have been doing a lot of brush camping this game, I've noticed. And a very interesting adaptation here. You see, Double Giant's Belt is the pickup from Otto here. He recognizes that Young Glory isn't in a position to lose another fight. He knows he's going to be in the middle of many, many AoEs. So, with that uh, Hex Drinker Shield, he's hoping that the oh, seven. Oh, this is for another big play, though. Grabs up Yancer, rides himself in there. Masai getting jumped on as well. He's taking a lot of damage. Lantern's out, though, and a great stun from Salmay. Gets in the middle of the team, but to disrupt everyone. But Twitch gets a kill on Ken, and Vi picks up Ariana, actually. Leasing on Thresh, and that's three quick kills there for YG. Not at all what we expected there. Fizzif looked like he had a good line there, but a great Zonia's from Zara to kind of keep us safe for a little while longer. And that, took com that fight completely turned on its head there for World Elite. Auto flashing red. The cost effective item, you know, cost effective items in the early game, we always see the Doran's Blade because it gives you so many, so much bang for your buck. Double Giant Spell in the late game performs very much the same role. So they, they, they went all in on winning the next fight and they've done it. They have. So close the gap a little there between Goldale, where Jar actually gets himself bubbled up but able to Arcane Shift out of the way. He's not too unhappy there. I mean, they're going to defend this turret here. Young Glory would love to take out the mid turret, and they are going to get it. So, a window back in here, it seems like. The gold lead's still heavily in favor of World Elite at about 6,000 ahead. But Young Glory... They can't afford any more engages like that. No, not at all. If that happens one more time for World Elite, they're probably going to lose Baron, and that would be very bad news indeed. In fact, recognizing that, they're actually going to force here, I think, on Baron. I think that makes sense. Looking for the hook there. Finds it on the answer. No follow-up, though, from Zeresh. There's no man going in there for the knockup as Salmay goes in once more. Cataclysm on top of Love Cryboy as well. That was a great pick from World Elite. And really just shows superior map coverage that they've got. Able to have more information than YG. And Dead Zara, this is normal support Zara. This is AP Zara. Very integral to a lot of what YG want to be doing in fights. Yeah, and they've tried this AP Zara a few times. But the yeah, answer really hasn't really yet going on any occasion. So it's definitely something they're comfortable with. They do even blind pick this uh, mid Zara. But mixed success to limited success so far. YG trying to make something of this Baron attempt. They know they can't quite contest it. So they'll try and push down the T2 in mid instead. Of course, Twitch and Lee have to be careful here. Drive, uh, Thresh actually, I think, has been ridden in by the Oriana ball. They do get the turret. Looks like they will be able to maybe escape here. Fizzip looking for a hook. He wants to find a death sentence! Not quite enough there, but Salmon is still chasing in. That was a yeah. fantastic piece of prediction from Thresh, but not quite the range available. Still the, the kill cleaned up. Yep, caught instead by Icebound Gauntlet Ezreal. Looks like Otto coming in as well. Tidal Wave actually on Messiah. Assault and Battery on the top. And he's going to ride the Lantern out there. In fact, doesn't even want to right now. It's like, hang on a second. I think I can kill Otto. In fact, there's a knockup coming on to Sears. A ball. Already had a ball from nowhere. Travels all the way across the rift there. At least in safeguards himself out. I mean, what lead at this point, I think, realized that, you know what? Don't really want to chase for some more kills. So maybe we'll just push down the mid lane. Young Glory trying something, but what lead always seemed to have the answer. And Fizif, once again, just playing so, so well. Young Glory, you know, they took down 
OMG, they took down positive energy, but it looks like World Elite have their number here. And it's just one of those things where it feels like every team is having their peaks and troughs, and it's not just one team riding at the top. I mean, OMG are very comfortable at the top, but kind of everyone else is in a big group where you're never sure who's going to win. Yeah, as is kind of often the case here, it's another great grab there, Messiah cleaning up Sizz there with the ultimate. Man, actually getting bubbled up here, Dragon going in, but damage from Oriana, that's so much chunkage. Messiah still feels very safe, very powerful here. It's kind of interesting, right? You know, there's usually a top team, it seems like. Like, there's a top and a bottom, and we definitely have that here in the LPL. But the middle of the pack is always interesting in this league format here. And especially as we move towards the tail end here through the last few weeks. Here. Week 5 here is a lot of the way through is the answer. Good oracles to not die there. But the knockoff's going to come through. That's going to be a kill for Wager. Cataclysm traps too as well. Otto actually on the top there. A little bit of a mistake there from Man getting it himself killed as a result there. Masai actually getting jumped on, but Otto not quite enough there. Asali ultimate set. Now stuns everyone there as Dragon's going to get locked up. A great Zonis as well. And World Elite just clean up City right now. Jarvan went down. Doesn't even matter. Four for one trade there for World Elite. Going to get Some flashing health bars coming out from World Elite there, but crucially at the start of the fight and in the middle of the fight, Weijia on full health, able to free hit and win that fight. World Elite get one inhibitor. Going to just be content with that here. Don't want to get greedy. No real minion waves, I guess, to get greedy with and don't feel like face tanking without Jarvan. And instead, going to be happy to take the top inhibitor out. Big minion wave pushing down towards the bottom as well. I have to imagine some major items maybe getting finished. Weijal, interestingly, has a Brutalizer and a BF Sword now. That was not what I expected. I mean, the Brutalizer to get himself closer to 40% CDR. Uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard's really fallen off as a viable... Um, pick up on laners and even junglers these days. So, uh, just a bit of extra CDR coming out there. I believe at least 35% from items and probably the 4% mastery is meaning that he's perilously close to 40% CDR as well. Yeah, a percent off he'll be happy with the. Yes. And the blue buff, obviously, just uh, icing on the cake. Yes, very delicious. Blue, blue favorite icing. Messiah, speaking of items though, I saw the void stuff, I was like, oh, that's bad. And then I saw the need to see the I was like, oh, that's really bad for Young Glory. I mean, I mean, at this point, he could probably lend an AP item to Yanser and they'd still be okay. Yeah, I think so. She'll lend it to Man, so we can get some flag kills. But, uh, I mean, Bold Elite, very far ahead at this point. Well and truly 10,000 gold ahead. And I have to say, all credit to Messiah, honestly. You know, for having to play jungle in the last game and looking okay, but not great. If that was a criticism people had, he's really showing people this game playing absolutely amazingly. There's Wei Zhao aggressively arcane chest forward there to pick off Twitch. Now Sizz looking in trouble as well. Double buff Ezreal with the Ice Bomb Gauntlet is so obnoxious here. Yance are going to get blown up as well by Oriana. I mean, we're at this point. We don't say it often, but they're just playing with their opponents in their base now. Yep, this game is there to be finished whenever they're interested. So they push down the mid inhibitor. They could go for the win here. We'll have to see what they decide. Looks like that's exactly what they want to be doing. And why not? Plenty of advantage here. Very little YG can do at this point. And what a leap. A return to form, it seems like, at least in this game. Made the switch yesterday on day one here of week five. They're very stylish AoE finish there as well at that Nexus. Oh man, the double explosion as well to finish our day off. And what a day it's been here for day two of week five, Papa Smithy. But a worldly victory to top things off. Always good to watch. It's one of those things where we're not... We can't be a fly on the wall and know what the what the uh, thought process was for the role swap between Messiah and Man. I mean, it didn't look too hot the first day, but that was the you know the competitive debut of trying that out. They've gone back to the tried and true here, and the tried and true against a very hot young glory. It's easy to forget they came came into this game beating positive energy, beating OMG, taking out the first and second place team it's in the LPL. But uh, World Elite, they played just their brand of League of Legends, you know, with a couple of modifications for season three. But they looked great for it. They pick up the win, and now we just have this intriguing three way. Uh, Three-way split for third here as World Elite, Invictus Gaming, and Royal, uh, all eight and six in the standings. And uh, another day of LPL goes by, and another very crazy day of League of Legends. And of course, all the teams were really fighting, especially towards the middle here. It's going to be curious to see who does make it through, because remember, top six only in the LPL as they move through, I guess, through the league stage or the playoff stage. I guess it is the league stage of the uh, of the tournament. 
teams really want to pick up their wins, make sure they're not in those, that 7th or 8th slot, so we'll have to see here. But of course, we are done here for Week 5, Day 2. If you've missed any of today's games, and I highly recommend, Week 5 has been crazy, Papa Smithy, so you, of course, cannot check those out at youtube.com slash lolchampseries, and of course, check out all the other VOD coverage we've done there as well. My name is Patreon Time. I'll be joined by Papa Smithy for this one. We are Papa Time, and we're signing off for Week 5, Day 2 of the Tencent LPL Summer.